In the 1930s, the United States sank deeply into the Great Depression, and the Works Progress Administration was formed to create signage and advertising and other forms of propaganda that could be used by this organization. Many of the works included beautiful prints advertising travel, national parks throughout the country. Now, these posters were printed in their many, many, many thousands, and actually very few of them survive to this day. They were created quickly and simply. Now look at this gorgeous screened print with the yellowed paper and the very minimal set of colors to reduce costs. Really just wonderful, charming objects of joy. Here are some more examples. Here's an especially charming one with a really interesting and vibrant color palette. If I sample this color palette, I come up with this very small set of key colors. I can also recreate the sense of texture and grain visible in printed, slightly aged paper prints. Now this leads us to ArcGIS Pro. ArcGIS Pro, what a great opportunity, rich environment for us to work, right? So here is a map showing the area around the beautiful city of Rotterdam, which I had the opportunity to visit a couple of years ago and really thoroughly enjoyed. This is land cover areas determined by the Corine data set. Let's create a new style. A style is a set of symbols which can be easily populated, shared, reused, and it's a lot like CSS design files are for web content, but for your map. So I'm gonna create a new style in my project and I'm gonna call it WPA Poster, named after the Works Progress Administration posters. And in this style, I can populate any number of colors that I want to add to my color panel. And I've added those colors that I described earlier. Now here we are back in our map and I've opened the symbology panel for the water. If we expand the fill color, we can see, aha, the style that I've created and populated with five colors is available to us via this color drop list. That's great. The default is a solid fill, but we don't want a solid fill because that's too perfect. It's too digital. What we want is something with a little bit of tactile charm. So instead of a solid fill, I'll choose a picture fill. I have a set of options available to me and I am going to navigate to the picture pattern that I showed you earlier. So here we are with a picture fill and when I hit apply, I can see it applied to the symbology of my water features. Now it looks like we've got a paper background that we're working on top of. I am going to save this paper texture to my new style. So I'm gonna save this symbol within my style. So I'll save it. I'll call it poster paper, and now I can tint it to one of my theme color. In this case, I'll choose the water, the light blue water color, and apply a tint to my poster paper, which looks like this. It's not covering up the poster paper, it's just tinting the poster paper. So now we have the benefit of a paper texture with the flexibility of applying a virtual color to it. On my second layer, which is urban areas, I can choose the poster paper symbology from my gallery. I can similarly apply a tint color. It's so fast and so easy. Here it is for agriculture, forest, and lastly, wetlands. Now we have a map that is real data using a symbol created from a real paper texture and given a tint sampled from an actual WPA poster from the past. Let's take a look at creating a layout so we can make a poster of our own. Now I've added a title and a subtitle, Port to the World, Jack Dangerman's ancestors departed for the Americas from this very port. Thank you very much. Here is a North Arrow. But gosh, look how overly perfect they are. It looks fake. This text even though I have a charming art deco style font, is too crisp and perfect. How do we do a paper effect to this? Well, that's actually quite easy and very fun. So if I open the properties of this text that I've inserted in my layout and then jump over to the text symbol tab, there's an interesting option called text fill symbol, which if I expand it, gives me some options, but also the opportunity to say more polygon symbols, which when I 
choose this opens up our familiar old gallery and I could choose poster paper. Oh my goodness. Now we have a poster paper filled font and that's gorgeous. And just like the geographic assets, we can tint this based on one of our styles colors. Styles make things easier and faster. And we can apply that to the rest of the text too. But gosh, look at that north arrow. It still looks fake. Everything else looks plausibly printed. But that north arrow is too perfect. What can we do? And also, how can we spice it up a little bit? I was looking at the Wikipedia entry for your beautiful city, and I noticed this really elaborate coat of arms of Rotterdam. And I thought, ooh, this could make an interesting north arrow if I simplified it slightly. So I saved this SVG and I opened it up in Adobe Illustrator and simplified it to show only the, the lion, griffin, crazy monster thing and situated him so that he was pointing north. And then back in ArcGIS Pro, see how there's a symbol option in the North Arrow properties? You aren't stuck with the symbols available. You can make your own symbol. You can import your own SVG marker. I'm going to click that file button, navigate to my SVG file, and look at this. Now I have a custom Rotterdam coat of arms north arrow. He's gray though. What do I do? Well, similarly, I can open up that shape fill symbol and navigate to my poster paper symbol and I'll choose this. And now I've got a papery lion pointing north. And of course, I'm going to tint him so he matches everything else. Now here we are with a layout showing Rotterdam in a papery texture with a, a charming color palette and a title. Next, we can add a little bit of a border, just like the real posters did, and a legend. Always sign your work. So here's the result. Here's a closer look, another closer look. Now this poster is available to you. So I've, I've printed out some really big versions of this and you are welcome to have at it, print it, keep it, ignore it, whatever you'd like to do. Thank you for this opportunity to talk about the fun ways that we can use true geographic data and true textures and consistent symbols using styles in ArcGIS Pro. And guess what? We have a lot of fun along the way. Thank you so much.